I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while this need. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. That all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth it means that he's giving you access is a scepter of dominion that with this word when he grants it unto you then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers now truthfully speaking it may take a while you see because god is not a magician it's a system that means your participation is required but that line upon line my brothers and my sisters let me give you a guarantee and i tell you this in the name of the lord if you listen to the things that i teach you and you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny it's a matter of time forget about the things you do not see and focus on what god is giving you what god is giving you is greater than any car you can buy trust me you must have something greater than material things to get material things you can't have something less than material things and then have these things god is if all god gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you he will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you, you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out, 
so if all you are looking for is just result you may be you may miss a major part of the dealings of god god is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting and then the devil will use manipulate because you see let me tell you this the domain of the senses is where satan dwells he is the master of the sense realm he knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses the sensory perceptions that come from his environment so he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what god is doing in your life if it is true you are receiving favor where is it and you stand and say boy it's true okay god you serve I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gari. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word, not our experiences. Your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful. So if you depend on your experiences, you will see gaps in, supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God. You will see obvious things God did not do, supposedly. So you take your mind, your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity. You use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And he said, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them if if you give yourself halfway hoping so that if it fails at least you can put your leg somewhere it, it doesn't work like that let me tell you you throw yourself in this thing and say if i perish i perish this this scientific christianity i know god is faithful but let me patch him with an uncle so one leg is here one leg so that whatever happens your ego is not strong and that very ego is why you may never see the power of god because you have not proven to god that you have thrown all to him and you just come and say god if you don't help me i don't have an option god says this is what i like now that you have stepped aside let me show you that i'm a great god are we blessed tonight i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you you know most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently even pastors most men of god don't know why they hold weekly fellowships others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry 
um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before God empty handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God is one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the Spirit of God that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of God to learn the ways of God life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category I'm passionate about what I do not know I'm passionate about the danger I may submit myself to not knowing what I should know and so my heart is always panting to find out Lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do I not know if you do not know look at me for instance if I'm standing at the edge of this stage and I do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down I'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because I'm not aware it will not touch me I will fall and it can kill me is that true so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for god to expose us to the ways of god and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of god in the midst of his people is 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 not going to be possible to present a god that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him it's one thing to know that the possibilities of god are encapsulated in this bible but it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it you don't need to experience everything but that god does something in your life that you can now say kai god now i know I know so the next time you are talking to someone and says which god you say no forget about apostle look at my life i'm now a testimony an epistle that god is able to do this and that hallelujah there is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word the spirit of distraction you can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking, you are learning. No. The Bible says that the sower sows the word. Right there, Satan is in the midst of, of, of God's people. Roaming around and looking for careless hearts. And he comes by himself and takes the word. So that you are ever learning. Oh, this topic. Ah, I know it. I remember Genesis chapter this verse this. But there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. So please let's challenge ourselves and say, Lord, it is true that I don't serve you just for results. But Lord, I'm determined. I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life. If you see God's hand in one, two, three areas and remaining four, five, six, you are encouraged. But where you get zero over six of God's hand is not enough testimony. Are we together? It is the word of God that builds. It is the word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom. Like a domain. And the word of God allocates you. Come darling. And says you stand here. Come my dear. Stand here. Come. This is your place of dominion. You have believed in me enough. The word of God gives you your allocation in life. So this person starts somewhere. And God says there is a seat I have given you in the prophetic. 
and the word of God gives you that position. You stay there and you know it's an office backed up by God himself. No man will be able to stand against you. This one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony, not of your desire for ministry. Listen, as a testimony of your staying power with God. For as a prince, you have power with God. You can roam around and say, God has called me into business. Life drives you out. You come again and say, God called me into family. And you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say, it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space. And he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life dominion is territorial until you find your jurisdiction of dominion you cannot begin to walk in it you will hate people you will be angry you will quarrel people you will hate others that god is blessing in their area of dominion it is the word of god that allocates while the word of god is being taught mystery after mystery principle after principle the spirit of god is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance and so this lady hears that god is distributing this and then the call of god upon her life locates her in the place of the call and this one hears that god is lifting people in the area of business and god keeps her there and by the time these people have been around god for a long time you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension this roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes you are a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. 
Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you to get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what I'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when God gives you a spiritual inheritance no man, no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that God will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths I have found there is rest when you find this all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now they are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student, the responsibility of the Spirit of God, no, they're, they're, you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with Him and you are saying, Lord, guide me, curriculum after curriculum. No rushing, no comparison, I stay with you. Five years, others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, I used to know Pastor Femi unfortunately you used to know him that he must died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called Galatians 2.20 now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already? God bless you. Bless you guys. Thank you. We must have passion for the word of God. I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year. In fact, when the Lord put this in my heart, I said, oh Lord, but I've cried to you again and again to allow me to preach this. And... Um, I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful Kai. God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom. Please listen to me. There are things when you find in this kingdom. God, hell, and men will know you found something. There are things when you find only God will know you found it. There are things when you find only men will know. But there are things when you find God, men, hell, will know by, by his grace you have been given something 
and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight, I will just do an introduction of it, true riches. Just an introduction. It's not part one. We have a series next. We'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year. But, and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all. Settle down and listen and let God bless you. Because when we hear riches, the first thing we think about because of the way i don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual luke chapter 16 and verse 11 luke chapter 16 and verse 11 read with me believers one two read Ah, that's not you. Be delivered from. Let's read one more time. One to read. Uh huh. Hold on. It's a question. Who will commit to you? So this one is not an achievement. People commit it to you. Listen. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Unfaithful mammon. The word unfaithful suggests instability. Is that true? Something that is not reliable. And it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? When I saw this scripture, it blessed and changed my life. Who will commit to your trust true riches? There's something in this kingdom called true riches. And the Bible says that the basis for access to it, among other things, is faithfulness. Listen very carefully. And then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the Bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from God who else has that access he's not just trying to tell you the, he's saying who else who else can commit to you this mystery that we call true riches thank you Ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 2 to 8 listen very carefully and you understand something powerful tonight Paul is speaking now if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word verse 3 how that by revelation listen he made known unto me what the mystery by revelation he made known I didn't search it out he brought it and gave it to me as I wrote a four in few words, we are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, 
I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight. <laughs> Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace. So it's a grace. Is this grace given? What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles. Help me. The unsearchable riches. Not just the gospel. That I should preach the unsearchable unfathomable riches look at the description that is used there he didn't say that i should preach the gospel that i should preach they, they are mysteries the bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the bible calls the unsearchable riches of christ these are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting some, some eight, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that. And he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible. This is the Pauline epistle. What is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business, Naira and Kobo, no, sir. May God open your eyes. It is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God, by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it it's not just by fasting and praying it's not just by reading a book god comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of christ this is what the bible calls true riches what is it that's why Paul Paul was remember Paul said I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all so Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy that man was very diligent in the spirit and when it came to this description Paul was even broken seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life he acknowledged that unto me who am less than the least of the saints was this grace given that I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere. When Jesus was, I was not even part of the seventy. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you. I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian, the dispenser. That's why he started by saying, look, when my teachings are hard, don't criticize me. There is a grace. I received it. God came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing. And he calls the name, the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of Christ. I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. 
that means profitless knowledge both for me and for the saints that God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life it's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the Lord opened me up to this I was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and God is my witness and I tell you this I'm a, I'm a student I'm not ashamed when I learn things from people and I build you know I'm not I'm not somebody who is, 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 is arrogant to say all this and that I am a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way I look at you is the same way God was opening me up to the world see this this is the key the mystery that connects to this and many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. I say, because I'm the one who told them to. Not everything in your life will come by studies. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But we're teaching, we're teaching, this is, this is, this is a school of the spirit. Not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture. My brothers and my sisters, there are different ways God imparts knowledge to us. One of it is through the stillness of your spirit. Be still and know that I am God. And one of it is access, revelation, spiritual illumination. God just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth. These spiritual blessings, these unsearchable riches, what you call true riches, they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now. The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage there has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge where we sustain an advantage it is not it is not something hidden that life is harsh my brothers and my sisters listen to me it is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm mm -mm. from tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations etc etc everything looks like it's against you you only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage are we together now yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that i will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability i have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification 
it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that god has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided and you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage are we together now bless you thank you so true riches i define are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of god's life here and now we're just doing an introduction romans chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace everybody say the abundance of grace the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness it says they shall reign in life they shall reign in life they shall reign in life this is what validates the fact that we are kings revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed them should be it's a mistake there because these are the four and twenty elders redemption was not for them so they are speaking over the saints so the word us there is a mistake in translation redeem them to god by thy blood out of every kindred listen now every tongue every people every nation verse 10 and has made us now them you understand and has made us unto our god what kings and priests and the bible says and we shall reign where on earth so god's dominion agenda is real he wants us to reign he wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the christ now i hope you understand let's let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities that jesus christ came and said i am the way the truth and the life then he says that no man cometh to the father except by me is that true so jesus is the door to the kingdom he is the only not even just many he is the only valid access point into the life of the spirit you can manipulate through all that routes into a life of spiritism but if you want to access the kingdom life jesus is the authorized channel not even an angel are we together now and then the bible lets us know that the 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 system that makes for salvation romans chapter 8 when you, 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10 you know the bible says that you confess with your heart the lord jesus you believe you will mount the lord jesus you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead then you are saved the moment you get born again watch this what does it mean to be saved as it were to receive new life very simple the bible says that there is a translation but much more than a translation the bible lets us know that this divine life the life we call zoe known by men as eternal life but it's more than eternal life it is god's life a quality not the kind the very life of god are we together now the bible says by the ministry of the holy spirit that that life is supplanted we're refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes another example i've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration this is the mystery of marriage the mystery by which two people become one right so a separate entity called a man another separate entity called a woman by covenant they become one one not physically but one in the spirit recognized by god himself are we together now that's why the bible says let no man do asunder it put asunder is a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened. Still by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the operation of the word, the logos, and the operation of the spirit of God begin in your life. You begin to learn the ways of God. And then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience. And then your mind is educated again. The light is driving out that darkness. And gradually, gradually by all those exercises, conformity and transformation. Not impartation yet. Conformity and transformation. These things will remain for a very long time in your life. And then you begin to see the grace speaking. Are we together now? Because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. So it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil. There are things that are correct. So God will not reset your mind. And then he will do that only with your permission. So it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years. That's how slow you wanted God to take you. Are we together now? So you find out that after 10 years, the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with God is not showing in your life. God is limited by your yieldedness, limited by your alignment. This is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. And then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace. People who by his predeterminate counsel, he has called into certain offices and dimensions. Usually God will do an unusual work in them. Are we together now? A work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness. That's why they can't take credit for it. It was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide. So they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is. The only thing they have to do is correct their errors, not pray for new visions. They have been seeing it since. It's just that they have been interpreting nonsense. So what they are repenting of is not, it's not, it's not a hazy vision. There are people who even, they got born again and there and then, they started seeing visions. There and then. Others came from priesthood. A wrong key forced the door. To, you, you understand what I mean? A wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access uh, believers are you learning something yes to you, it looks like you are just seeing visions. No, there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway. And there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware. For being granted access to see things in the spirit. And you are routing by a wrong door. You will not know because it's subtle. After 10 years, you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil. Are we together now? So when you get born again, it's true that your eyes were open with the charm. You will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you, but the realm of the spirit is already open to you. It's true. Systems of advantage that believers can access and God can grant them grace. Maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least. We'll still do them next year. The unsearchable riches. These are the things that when I look at in my life, sometimes I just get down on my knees and I say, God, thank you. Thank you. You don't owe me anything. You have been faithful. I found them and they are very powerful. Can I give you the first one? The first of these true riches, this mystery, is called the goodness of God. The goodness of God. What is this? You will know now 
that it is that grace that is released on you if this grace is not present you cannot have conscience it is the goodness of god that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of god allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance but the goodness of god also allows for continual repentance the word repent is not for sinners i've told you this it's not a word that is just left for sinners it's a kingdom expression a system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of god's glory it's called repentance let's look at a very serious scripture romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 just write it down and let's read we're bible students romans 2 1 to 4 ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Three. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now look at verse 4. Read with me, please. Or despised thou the what? Riches. Hold on. Stop. Let's not rush. Despised thou the remember we're talking of true riches we're fishing them out now that there is something called the riches of his goodness what does it do and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leaded thee to repentance if you ever repent it is the goodness of god that came to you it's not something you did by your strength to say oh i think I... no the the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that god has been good to you this is the bible it says it is one of the two riches given to the saints the riches of god's goodness hmm. are we still together tonight did you know that the riches of god or the goodness of god is one of the true riches of the kingdom many people just ah oh god when the bible says surely goodness we quote it every time surely goodness and mercy as if we are singing a special number this is a very deep mystery if the goodness of god does not go with you i will tell you i will show you people from the bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches you will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of god's goodness read with me one to read speaking lies in hypocrisy uh-huh having their conscience seared with a hot iron do you know what this means that means you have lost the ability to recognize this is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman bring out a child and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand once the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of christ so god looks at men and sends his goodness to them and all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level and they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it keep that scripture again please romans 2 and verse 4 the riches of his goodness 
not just his goodness the riches the wealth you see that a man who had this was david david knew the goodness of god that's why he became a man after god's heart lucifer didn't have this if Lucy, no, no demon has this. Lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of God. So repentance is in it. It's not that he doesn't want to do it. Has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds? Why didn't he say, God, I've watched this thing for a long time. Let's talk. You are my creator. No, it is the goodness of God that allows men to ever see the need for repentance. evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades don't just pray for signs oh god let them know i was called mm -mm. pray intelligently lord let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had. Charles G. Finney. Are we together now? They had this in, in very abundant measures. They understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of God. When we say the goodness of God, we just mean his ability to be benevolent. It's more than that. The primary assignment of the goodness of God is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness hmm. second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight it says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but it's long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign. So that I get to a point where my light becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared... God made somebody to give me miracle a lot. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align, so that his glory can better find expression in your life. The riches of his goodness. The next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house, the key is not counseling. The key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of God I, I got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting God to help them to start a life and the, the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and 
this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it will help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me that was how they had to look for I, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of God. They are the people we call heartless, conscienceless, like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of Nigerians. This is what they need. Are we together now? Number two. Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, working that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting. See it now again. Get understanding. 
Now see the benefits. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is? Causing men to discern, acknowledge and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 doth not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standeth in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates, the place of exchange, where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors for unto you O men i call wisdom is speaking and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple simple there does not mean humble simple means unwise meaning there is there is no fortitude for comprehension it says understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart hear for i will speak excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things seven for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips eight all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge receive my instruction and not silver hold on if i give you wisdom and i give you silver wisdom says please don't be foolish to choose silver leave silver fast and come to me and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies two things the bible says are better than rubies one wisdom to a virtuous woman and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what i want you to do. now wisdom is giving you a manifesto like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out and he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him and he's saying by me kings reign if you see any king reigning on earth this is what enthroned him wisdom you see any king reigning in business, in ministry, it's not just God. Wisdom. 
By me kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit. Substance there is not money. Substance there is results. Tangibility. I will fill their treasures. Go ahead. The Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Next verse. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Three more verses or two. Then I was by him. Ah. As one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight. Rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth. And my delight were with the sons of men. Last verse. Now therefore unto me, O ye children... Hearken to me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Wisdom. One of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results. That means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Not the knowledge of it. Not the comprehension of it. The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to use the word to produce supernatural results. That's wisdom. My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today. Supernatural wisdom that happened to men. They rose on account of that wisdom. Let's look at one scripture. First Kings chapter 3, Solomon. God's portrait of wisdom. You see that every once and again, these men obtain one or more of these attributes. And that's what they used to do business in the earth realm. And they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We're reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. 
and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself, what? Long life. Neither hast thou asked, here it is again, unfaithful mammon, riches for thyself. Nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies, but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Let's see what God gave him. I have given, given, given. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee. I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings. You see that? Every time kings were there, wisdom, understanding. Go to chapter 4 from verse 29. Go to chapter 4 and verse 29. Chapter 4, 1 Kings and verse 29. Read with me please. One, two, read. And God gave, go ahead, Solomon, wisdom, uh -huh, and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sun that is on the seashore, the manifesto, the attributes of all this spiritual blessing. Next verse. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Uh -huh. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, than Heman, than Kalkol, than Dada, all these guys are champions of wisdom. They were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom. And his fame was in all nations round about. 32. For he spake 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. Worship team. You see how songs come? An encounter with the spirit of wisdom. Believe me, one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we are still singing it. There were songs that were written last month. We are tired of it. It tells you the dimension. It's not that there, there's something wrong with the song. The dimension from which the song came, if it is that which is of the earth is earthy. That which is of heaven is heavenly. 33. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are king to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a, in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? 
But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said, get wisdom. And I said, where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, wisest, richest, Job is having a conversation. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Have you seen that they always go together? Next verse. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. Ah. Where is the land of the living? That means it's not found here. It's not a commodity that is affordable in any market. Let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth. Mm -mm. It cannot be found. The earth does not have the capacity to produce this. It can produce Sophia, human wisdom, that is a derivative of trial and error and science, but not the wisdom that comes from above. The depth said, it is not in me. The sea said, it is not with me. That means all these things, go back, all these things are storage devices on earth. They hide things. The depth, there are things that the depth keeps. And those who know it can say, bring it out. That's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say, O oh, earth. He said, let the people praise thee. This earth is not barren. Let the people praise thee. This earth will start yielding meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth <sighs> no wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof uh -huh. it cannot be valued with the gold of offer nor with the precious onyx nor the sapphire next verse the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? He listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things. And he says that wisdom is not there. Seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say we have heard of his fame look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's a secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why I told you it is it is a grace. This is not something you walk. Education cannot give it. No. When men possess this dimension of wisdom, God gave it to men. It's one of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Solomon possessed it. And he did wonders. Ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery. And you can see a very young, frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her 
bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me satan has deceived us to chase after things god never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of god so many people will tell you this is an interruption there are many men of god that will not focus listen many young nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of god They'll just go all these pastors you are just lucky you are anointed you are anointed that's all let me hustle my life no sir no sir except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger can change what the wisdom of god does in your life let me tell you this learn this early in life whether people believe in you or not it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life if you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of christ your anger is just beginning you will be angry till you die it will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say yet the spirit saith the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high iso so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there will be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen 
I have studied the church in Nigeria for many years. I have studied the church in Africa. I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so. I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight. Not sin, not disobedience, but that the Spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the Spirit is going. Wherever the voice of God is, that's where His power is. So if God's voice and power is going left and you are going right, even if it's sincerely so, that's the end of it. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear. You will appreciate this in years to come. The higher you rise in ministry, the more desperate you must cry. Moses said, don't send us from here. Moses was not a fool. With a rod in his hand, thy rod and thy staff, he said, no way. If you will know, I need to know you are there. Just because God said, move left yesterday, does not mean he will say, move left today. You must hear him part time. And there is a grace. I have studied this subject of hearing God properly. I can tell you, hearing God even prophets have problem with hearing God let me tell you something about hearing God the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy I can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of God most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies. The hearing ear. I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets. And you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives. And yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down. Where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken? The children were about to be taken. The man was a prophet. Read your Bible and see how many prophets were stranded. Be careful. Let me tell you this. One day I will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through. And you are wondering, madam, with this experience, right after her giving birth that almost took her life, she will display that mastery again in the hospital. Prophets cry. It's amazing how confused prophets can be. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and i will hear what he will say unto me read your bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when i learned this i learned this mystery from dr dk olukoya i was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if god helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces you must be careful because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true Have you not seen people dying 
of infirmity and healing others. What is the mystery behind it? If, if you understand what I'm... This thing is a very deep teaching. That's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. One of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do. This ministry today, my brothers and my sisters, is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches, you won't go down. I'm not one person who comes all the time and say, God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says, God said, just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak. Everyone around me knows God has said. The voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. If it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. It's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there. No. Here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano. You can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn. But you know God is very faithful. He will allow you. He knows we are students in the school of the spirit. Just keep playing around. But the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you. Let me tell you God is not always speaking. God speaks but he's not always speaking. A lot of people keep saying God is always speaking. No sir. Are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the department. God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people. This is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you know, like, as usual, every time you said God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit down and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and to you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hi, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. 
we were preparing to start packaging our messages i was thanking god and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me and just saying oh god thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us and here comes the voice of god no in this season you are not going to sell your messages facebook that time it was i mean it was even the first head of media's facebook page and he said just carry your messages and put them on mp3 put them on facebook don't put the videos just the audios and i will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth that's it my brothers and my sisters when god says sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said listen to me there are things god has said when god talks notice that god doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it so i stand upon my watch i'm not in a hurry to move god what are you saying in this season that's the reason why we have workers retreats that's why we have our own retreats a few weeks now i'm going to start my end of year retreat i'm telling you you don't know how excited i am at that time because many of you have gone no disturbances i just shut my phone and sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear god because there is as it were many voices many sounds and none of them is without significance the voice of house rent can interrupt what god is saying this spiritual haziness has a science the encumbrances of life can push you your child's school fees your life and god is saying fast for three days i say is it god is it a demon is it yes there are times that you check against the word of god but let me tell you there are times only god will help you because even you you don't know whether this is god again most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm that's why they don't understand yes ago i've shared with you the story i had limited transport fare from kaduna back to zaria and i took initiative and i went and ate yam and beans also with the money i mean why sit here till we die remember the four lepers at least i should do one i already know that it's only god that will know how to take me back home and i believed with all my heart that i was acting by faith and i did and i stood in front of the junction near waek office in kaduna and a car just stopped and the holy spirit told me enter public transport oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car. I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that until we pass judgy i knew there was no hope you know if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira you can beg but i mean when well, well, you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare and then they now said everybody bring your money and people were bringing them but my god is my witness my heart was at peace this is what happens when it's god that is speaking you leave him to be responsible for the word i just obeyed and that was how someone brought out paid my transport fare i dropped at fly over here entered the bus happy because i felt at least whatever it is this one i'll pay and someone knew me in the car and paid i stopped in front of north gate with the same money i was with there it was a message God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. 
let it just be that he sees him are you hearing what i'm saying now you will need this for ministry when god sent us to go for our crusade we got up and moved like madmen what you see today my brothers and my sisters is a product of the voice of god you need the grace to hear god not grace for prophecy lord let me hear you. You, you, you you look you can pray and say god search my frail person what is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me help me in that area there are some of you that you're hearing you have not trained your hearing if you if god speaks through your ears you will not hear and so you are going to say, Lord, give me a kind of dream that I will wake up and find myself standing. I will know that this one was not a dream. Let me tell you, if your heart is right, God will give you. There are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind. Mind? How many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams? You know this one is not my mind. This is the voice of God. Unsearchable riches the hearing ear the seeing eye one time the storm was boisterous i think it was peter or paul and it was very obvious they were going to capsize and all of a sudden the hearing ear and the seeing eye an angel appears to him and speaks to him and says don't worry there shall be no loss and he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me. And he has said to me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived at an island called Melita. When you hear God, you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing. And people are saying, Excuse me, sir, this is fire. You say, No, I'm sitting on the voice of God. roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and you say god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and you say people we're ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us we are victims of the lack of hearing many of our parents were called into ministry they ran away not hearing and the blessing that would have come to us if they obeyed god 
it would have been easy you would have been born again since four years but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked i said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything, but my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray, and when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary janet shut down my friend you are not hearing god just shut down lord what is the devil trying to do you are going to abuja today next tomorrow you are praying and it's like you saw the map of kano and then it's like you now saw london <clears throat> shut down lord what are you saying please hear what i'm i'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of god consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage 
this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately there are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god oh. i thought that it was god that said i should start the ministry i remember years ago when my well friends and all of that you know not really close friends who meet me and say apostle with the kind of grace you have start a tv ministry start this i told you about pfn when we had our first crusade pfn was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say start start a church we need you be careful not every good thing is god things don't have to be bad for you to leave them sometimes they can be good they are just not god There was a time i was preparing taking my bath years ago i had a meeting i don't know if it was in kaduna or one of these places i had prayed fasted prepared a powerful message as as i was taking my bath all of a sudden my peace i will come to that will discuss peace peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out the stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of God works. He said he will speak peace. Peace is a voice. Peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water. Peace can tell you, man of God, this association you are joining is what will destroy you. It doesn't mean they are fake. It doesn't mean they are not of God. But this association is what will bring down your grace. Man of God, be careful. That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream. And in your dream you saw a maker dying. But in the physical it will never happen. Because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident. And start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you it will remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Uh, make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma. If you have been unfaithful, not faithful with unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom? These are the mysteries we do ministry with. These are the mysteries by which kings rise. And you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits. And you are saying, my God, how is this thing working? My brothers and my sisters, these are the systems. Paul said, me who I am the least of all the apostles was this grace given that I become a communicator of the unsearchable riches. I have learned these things and they have helped me. They have delivered me from evil. That prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us 
one hearing from God can deliver you and deliver your children's children. Our parents went head on. Some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of God in Nigeria today. And had they continued hearing God well, they would have given us a good footing. But the inability to hear. I have seen pastors, men of God that I knew years ago. Men of fire. And seen them and their shadows of themselves. How can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow? Because of one of these spiritual blessings. No wisdom. Some of us have lost destiny helpers that can change our lives because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship. Are you ready to pray tonight? Every time you see things around your life not working the way God orchestrated, don't sit down and discuss. Get into the place of prayer immediately. There is war happening in the heavenlies. There is a clash of spirits. They are claiming your body. Listen. Do you know that when Moses died, watch this. When Michael came to carry the body of Moses, he found Satan too. Satan wanted to use the body of Moses, enter it and resurrect as Moses. Are you getting the point now? resurrect as moses and start bringing error to people and he needed the body desperately and michael said no 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 i'm not going to drag with you the lord rebuke you how many people saw your mother in a dream a spirit carried the face of your innocent mother landed it in the dream of her enemy and she got up and said i knew it i knew it joshua selman's mother is a witch this one i saw it the woman came with a knife how many of our mothers and fathers have been called witches and wizards and and this is what many prophets see and because they do not have discernment are you getting the point now they now say i saw who some this and that and that and that is it not in your bible when a a, a diviner invokes the supposed spirit of samuel to prophesy I refuse any other spirit from influencing my life. I, I, I don't have time for that. I cannot be a victim for the, the failure that is orchestrated. Look at Job. One more scripture to prove this to you. Job, a man who loved God and eschewed evil. But the Bible says a meeting happened between spirits in the heavens. Job was not there. Oh. A man just gets up in the morning and they have concluded a meeting about you. Your children are on the way. Thunder strikes them. You just finished furnishing your house. Thunder strikes it. Your cattle die mysteriously. Notice all the deaths that happened. There was one, one people left to come and testify. Is that a testimony? Job! I'm the only one who is alive. This is what happened. And then the meeting was held again. And he said, let's touch his body. Ah! So a meeting can happen. Watch this. Let's destroy this family. And they conclude it. You snore your way through the morning. Wake up. And that's the last time you know peace in a long time. You are a victim. Your body is only a victim. Tonight, this is the, this is the theme of this miracle service. Let me tell you. When these spirits clear out of the way, you will be shocked to see the doors that will open for you. All of a sudden, you who nobody would call you, you will receive a call. The last time you spoke with that person was five years. He did just call you. The Holy Ghost made it happen because there was a spirit that was stopping that call. Every time they want to think about you, a distraction happens and you remain in that suffering. And when you come to us, men of God, we say, it's okay. Don't worry, things will change. One day it will go better. That, 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 no, 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 no. That's why I told you, you must insist tonight. You must insist. You are mighty on your throne. Two things. There are three things that give demon spirits access to people and families. I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Three things. Number one, covenants. Covenants. 
covenants. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. America as a nation. Listen, a man can wear the inner wears of a woman. Watch this. And be moving on the street. And that man returns back and blessings keep following him. A very stupid man, but good things are happening in his life. Let me tell you why. It's because of the covenant of the fathers. There were people who signed an agreement and said, Lord, we give this nation to you. Anyone who comes under the umbrella of this nation is authorized to walk in that blessing. And so, a woman, a man can go for plastic surgery to become a woman and yet come out alive. In Nigeria, you try to even just operate somebody's ear and he will die. Was it the knife that killed him? Are the doctors so daft? Let me tell you what our forefathers left with us. Ready? This is what they left. They went to mountains, valleys, regions. Listen. And all kinds of ancestry. We can fake it and pretend. Listen. I'm a new creation person. I've read the Pauline epistles. Are you getting what I'm saying? I understand the grace of God and the new creation realities very well. But I know God and I understand his ways. Are you following me now? Please come, two people, very quickly. So that any two, no, no, sit down, Pastor Fami. I promise you can come. Come, stand here, stand here. Watch this. In my example, this guy is a thief. This guy is a wrong occupant. Watch this. If this is my handkerchief and Ken comes to quickly steal it, the moment he hears this, my footsteps, what will he do? He will run away because he's a what? Thief. But if somebody comes and meets promise and says, promise, give me 10 naira, I will give you this handkerchief. And promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief. Is there a contract there? Is there a covenant there? If he sees me coming, will he refuse? Because you see, the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, our forefathers went to idols and they said, protect our wives. Make the plants bring crops for us. In response, we will hold festivals every time. In response, we will donate children to you. In response, they, it was not their fault. They did it because Christianity had not come to Nigeria. Now watch this. When Samuel Ajayi Crowder and many other Christians came, they brought the gospel of salvation, not the mysteries of the kingdom. Are you getting me? They brought the gospel and we salute them. But that was not enough. The understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught. So even they themselves died. I traveled to, we were in Gombe, one time Gombe State. And we we're going to Yerima's village to go and greet his family. And on our way there, there was a rock like a cap. And they were telling us a story there. That the people used to live there. That that rock used to open physically there was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open and people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war and this is what they said the last person to enter you are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest, even where there was no rain, mysteriously the crops grew. These spirits kept their part of the contract. 
all of a sudden some missionaries just found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hit the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around here that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and say we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing fiji island changed at once there are so many families that are seated part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol you will never build a house you will never marry contract sealed now you came that you are born again and you are moving around 35 37 no marriage the other one too is coming when you meet pastors they say no problem are you not born again just believe marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the of the covenant even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they crop in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result the earth is out of course but have i not said verse 6 ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience personal disobedience deuteronomy when you read i think chapter 28 or so it shall come to pass it says thou shalt diligently hearken to these things to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the Bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey God nothing happens no it's not about God doing it it's about the laws in the spirit they will not change they didn't start with the Old Testament those laws predate our dispensation. Are we together now? So tonight, I want you to look at your life very carefully. 
especially for those of us who have come have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other that does not mean you are not born again that does not mean you are not serious with god but it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say no way i come by the blood i come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life somebody buys a recharge card to give you it disappears physically that's that's the extent to which this thing is working against you have you seen people like that a guy tells a lady i love you car will jam him two hours later just for trying to verbalize that i'm considering marrying you car jams him his friend now comes and says Tor, since my friend has come me too i love you something happened let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and received a slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when i was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site that temporal site used to be a hospital are you getting the point where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen I tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time I remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense many students were initiated into occultism because of that but tonight we come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the army. That this situation in your life must end. I sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies. A testimony is simply what happens when the Holy Spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life. Any other spirit must create problems. Tonight, daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives i saw poverty in my family as if we offended god coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background your name can be solomon you will remain poor until what needs to be addressed, be addressed. That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. A miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs. This is what Jesus did to the woman who was bound. He looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years. And he said, woman, thou art loose. Loose? He didn't say thou art healed. He said thou art loose. The moment the spirit left, he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body. And there she went. Remember that madman at gathering? That was an evangelist in a cave. Tearing himself into pieces. The moment the spirits heard that Jesus was coming, they were waiting for him at the other side. Hallelujah. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. I'll never forget one time I was praying. Praying seriously, I was in the spirit. And I had a vision. I saw that there is a tree that is close to where I stay. And I didn't see that tree again. I just saw a great beast like, like, a, like a being 
the tail was a snake the eyes were big like human head imagine this head now like an eye two of them one here one here and the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne mighty on your throne that's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person so your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 5 points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the bible because there is a spirit stopping you if this was a novel some of us would say take this i will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to Mount Zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that Jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me 
lives in me. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Yeah. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in Sing it two more times with faith in your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Jump up on your feet and sing it one more time. Same power. Conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquered the grave. Your love that rescued the earth is in me. Is in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation, is the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences, the spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation brothers and sisters when that happens to you then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and God is ready for us tonight I tell you God is ready for us tonight. Lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word. The body without a spirit is dead. The body without a spirit is dead. Now I realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life. Lift your voice and thank him for this revelation. Lord, I now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let the dissatisfaction rise from you Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Same power. That conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar, the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft, any generational cause. One more time, sing it. That conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Yeah. Your love 
rescue the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love your love say your love Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Mandalatata Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. Behind failures, challenge the spirit. Behind marital delays, challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces over your finances, 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Mata Labata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotoshe. Bring them out. Fire. 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 Bring deliverance tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison, physical poison. As you shout physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata bata. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we have victim. One, two, three. 
He must let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness, fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The Lord is giving me a word right now. There are ladies here. There is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you, to sleep with you right now. Lord, where are they? Let that fire, let that fire bring deliverance right now, right now, right now, right now. Every spirit husband, every manifestation, every spirit wife, every devil that has leads to you, it leaves you now, now, right now. He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah there are miracles happening make your way to the front now we'll give you room to testify stand here all the people that are coming out for miracles just stand here right now there are miracles that are happening i see someone like your nose 
it's like there is an irritation in your nose while we were praying you felt like there was fire on it and now it's lifted now it's lifted completely it's gone right now right now right now i'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now i see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place There are miracles that are happening miracles that are happening i saw this same case in kaduna this morning now i'm seeing four people four people there is one guy and three ladies you have pile pile for one of the ladies when you go to ease yourself it's as if you are giving birth blood comes out go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are asabe uh but i'm seeing another person again no oh. eh? This, you are, please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us. Very quickly, come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's, let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. Just testify. Tell us, look at the crowd, straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012? Yes. And now what happened? Every day, 
once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus While we are confession. talking, there is a lady who will come strongly confession. under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. Hallelujah. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to... But right now, it's gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give Praise her a God. chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So I peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I one more outside. Go and carry her. Jesus. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But, um... When I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said I should, we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front. At least 10 people. Check it right now. God is doing a miracle. Don't sit back. Inside and outside. Lower abdominal region. Lower abdominal region. That miracle is happening right now. Right now. Right now. At least 10 people. 10 people with that pain. As soon as you check it, make your way to the front. Celebrate Jesus. God is healing them. They are coming. They are coming. All of you, you can come and stand here. The moment you receive a miracle, please stand here. They will confirm you. At least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a gentleman. You came here with a throat condition. In fact, um, let me just describe to you. They are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat. It's like there is an elongation. Some, I'm seeing them saying they want to use, is it knife or something? And cut something that an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of god will come upon you as a witness to that Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Please bring the lady out. God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as, as a point of contact. As a point of contact. 
I'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump. I'm seeing one on the left, left side. Please check it, check it. When you receive a miracle, testimony is one way to seal it and keep it. The Lord is showing me three ladies. Your hair falls. Every time you go to comb your hair, you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing. This thing is a serious thing. You have used medication and it has not stopped. A miracle is coming to those people right now. A miracle is coming to those people. Yes, let's take the testimony quickly. Please, loud and straight to the point. Praise the Lord. Help us sound, please. Can you help us with this mic? I used to have this pen down my stomach here, but now I'm, I'm not feeling completely okay. gone. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. How long has it been? It's Come been on, long. Koinonia. Let's not get too used to miracles in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. It never returns to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The next person, please. My goodness, look at what God is doing. God is giving people miracles. Go ahead. My name is like I'm pregnant. It's to come like pain as in I'm pregnant and I've been complaining that for months. But today, when the prayer was going on, I felt relieved and my stomach is In fact, open. as she was talking, hold on. The Lord opened my eyes. There is a lady. Your stomach is already swelling. This is almost, it's even beginning to embarrass you. It's not just like a stomach protruding. You are feeling it very hard and stiff. Um, it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now God is giving you a miracle God is giving you a miracle God bless you, bless you quickly when they say we should shout praise the so I now shout the stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria but I can't feel it again Completely gone. Yes. give Jesus praise it never returns again, yes please praise the Lord um, recently I started having this eye pain when I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eyes get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time, but it just left me immediately. If Jesus prays, it never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that God used to give me every day when I'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time I try to push further I realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what has right happened? now when at the mention of the name Jesus I felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, co comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain. In the pain. Joint. You went to the hospital. Yeah. What did they say is wrong with you? They, did, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Yeah. Okay. And when you were praying, you prophesied that there is a uh, ten people here that that God is working on yes. their system. Yes. And now what has happened to you? The pain is gone. The pain is completely Even gone. The Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yeah. You go and check yourself, and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, where you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. 
power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later, you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like it's swelling up and sometimes i very i feel like very, a swelling there yeah and feel, now have you checked it yes I, is there I, anything I there okay. completely gone come on yeah. give jesus praise it never returns again in the name of jesus christ praise the lord i don't thank god for the spirit of fear as in i do get scared a lot but i now i'm free in the, name the of spirit of fear come it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, praise please. the Lord. I want to I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child when, when I was when I was young. I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know, sometimes 2nd of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her, fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I I've saw been that shaking, a, a, a I've finger. Been shaking it. I've been shaking it and I'm No not pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress, Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama is on as I make her door, please. You people should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming on, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like it it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother do, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother he's, where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the lord said he's going to connect him to a rich man he should be faithful to that man amen. that man will bless him amen. father let there be breakthrough in this family in the name of jesus asabe gabriel oh your name is gabriel your name too is gabriel sir who is titi Lyo? titi Lyo. i'm hearing a name titi Lyo. Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long you are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is no word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray. Right now that you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear breakthrough for you, sir. This is what I hear. The Lord is saying I should 
announce breakthrough to you father i hold his hands and i announce breakthrough in jesus name praise the lord your mother is sick what's wrong with her she has been bleeding for the past one year bleeding you, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here huh? your mother bleeding for one year non-stop how about that and you fell under the anointing no, sir. you are just standing to agree yes, for her. okay sir. no problem we have a session for that but since you came out hold my hands hold my hands look at me do you believe god will touch your mother where is she where is home taraba taraba state yes, sir. you are from taraba yes, sir. lord show mama mercy right now in the name of jesus christ as it touches you it touches her please don't just come out at will ah, you are related to her your sister is titi Lyon. Yes, sir. where is she she's in cardinal what's she doing she's schooling at cardinal she's schooling okay let's pray for her father in the name of jesus christ what are you doing you i'm a student sir where kpss Eh? knowledge is power secondary school okay knowledge is power yes, sir. your sister is where kaduna kaduna yes sir tell her is she married no sir tell her marriage is coming for her are you hearing me you believe it because she has been praying about this your mother where's your mother your mother has been joining her to pray yes, your sir. mother even went to a man of god and they prayed about yes. this thing is yes, that true your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So, if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then, don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. The power and love our God is an awesome God. Our God Please clear the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. From heaven above with wings. The power and love and love. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer requests ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do might, you do glory, you do glory, you are a great God, awesome is your name, awesome is your name. May God use you to 
wipe the tears of your parents listen let me tell you any child hear me i'm saying this especially to we young people any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs are swollen. Because it's been long I saw him. Breathe well, and at the same time, he's having problem with mama. And all of his children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having, like breathe well. It's just similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. No, 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 daddy, sit down. Please sit down. sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, O oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba. They will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now. As I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ and there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're our God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very awesome serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Or what? Male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How will you like to have a child? That, do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names. We lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him, but God will use him. 
my God, I pray right now. Let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness. Right now in the name of Jesus. from village I go a lesson I will charm from village look at this mama went for election they fired something upon her head now she's mad is she mad is she your dog now yes. Yes. you are mad no you are you are not mad in the name of Jesus say I'm not mad I'm not mad in the name of Jesus whoever organized that charm on your head it returns back to them seven souls in the name of Jesus Christ Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. This is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In Jahem. You go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. This is look at look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you will be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are... Or you are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Amen. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it. 
but I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law that he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it go in this place. If you know you smoke it go or codeine. Altar, once I make the altar call, just run and come and kneel down here. Because tonight is your night of salvation. Please, don't play games with your destiny. Anything you smoke, anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency. The moment there's time for altar call, please make your way here. We love you. But then the Lord wants to touch you. Let's hurry up because our time is gone. Your name is here. Out.
On the request right now, at the same time, an altar call is co as an altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to now is the time you can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad, we're a family, and any other person. There are those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is. I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking, you will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department. And um, will fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. prophesy over it Lord unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come are you praying Lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence makata lato every spirit responsible for barrenness here yeah, responsible for any setback in the name of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it by the blood of jesus we challenge it, jesus, we challenge it. lord let your people have testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we declare that every request every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ 
and you will stand to testify before the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now lift your hands and receive the prophecy. I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life, every cry for direction. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may you receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Every area of confusion, I arrest it right now. You will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are students, I pray for your academics. The exams that are about to come. Your best result in your various institutions. This exam is what will produce it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you record five points. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for every family represented here. Whatever has stagnated your family. By this anointing I declare. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has covered your glory. So that the glory of the Lord upon your life will not be seen. In the name of Jesus we tear that veil off. We tear that veil off. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Whoever needs to help you. Before next miracle service. I call them forth into your life. Mysterious helpers. Mysterious helpers. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Fresh grace for prayer. Fresh anointing for prayer. Every lack of passion for the things of God. I kill it right now in the name of Jesus. Every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life, it dies a natural death here tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. With these hands that are lifted, go and begin to produce results. Go and heal the sick. Go and open doors for the oppressed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle marriages. We release those marriages right now. I pray for families that are trusting God for miracle jobs. We release those jobs right now. Please believe me as I pray. We release those jobs right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death. That the devil has said you will not see the end of this year. In the name of Jesus, we lift up that embargo. We lift up that embargo. Favor like you have never seen, receive it right now. Open doors like you have never seen, receive it right now. Breakthroughs like you have never seen, receive it right now. I speak life to every dying thing in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever has rejected you, may they look for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command prophetic dreams. Mysterious spiritual experiences. May God show you the solution to your problems. In dreams and visions. Whoever is behind the failure of your life. We command judgment upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I prophesy unto you. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Access to deep revelation. Access to insight in the spirit. Whenever they are looking for men to favor, may they find you. May they find you. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed in the city and blessed in the country. You are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in. Every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of Jesus. I declare that the seal of the blood is upon you. You have no covenant with failure. You have no covenant with death. May God use you mightily. 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 You mightily. I declare, may the mantle of honor come upon your life. 
that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence I cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international mm -hmm. you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically I'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically I prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of Jesus Christ for one of you, the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before October. Your wedding will happen before December 31st. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we decree and declare over your life. You will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of God. There is someone here you are standing, you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch. One week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you have a few details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye